today is the easiest way to put together a quilt that you'll ever have. And that is putting together a quilt simply with squares. Now what happens is, as women, we set ourselves up for a lot of disappointment by spending days and weeks and sometimes months and years putting together a quilt, giving it to someone who doesn't understand the meaning of the work that went in there. So when you're giving quilts, whether it is for your family, for teenagers, for a dorm quilt, for um, maybe a charity quilt, this is the easiest thing you can do. Now, first of all, you wanna cut your squares. And this is a great stash buster. If you have lots and lots of fabric you wanna get rid of, it's really a good way to accent a maybe a line of fabrics. It's a good way to showcase that. It's a good way to make a theme or put a theme together or just to have fun. Now, there's no formula for how big the squares are except that you want it to be easy. There's rulers of all sorts. I love the ones that are from this company because they show through on every fabric. The marks show through on every fabric. There is a four inch ruler and a four inch square to go with that. So that's a really good size. There is a seven inch ruler and a seven inch square to go with that. So that's a good size or anywhere in between. Don't make it hard, don't make it convoluted. Don't try to do five and seven sixteenths. It's just not worth it. Just cut some squares. Any size will work. Now this is a great way to make a top of a quilt and it goes really fast. And the fastest tool in your sewing room is gonna be your serger. So the way to get started is just to put twos together twos together and twos together and keep on doing that until you have a string. Now what we call this is chaining on. So once you have one of the twos sewed together, you follow it or chase it with another one of the twos and another one and another one so that Every time you sew twos together, you are going to have them all attached until you finally have a chain of twos that almost looks like a cruise flag. So once you sew all of your twos together and you have all of those chained together and it looks almost like a cruise flag, then we're gonna cut those apart in twos. There is a real handy little gadget called the cutting gizmo. And what that does is it has a uh, sharp edge that's recessed so that when you start cutting, you will be able to just cut and cut and not have to reach for your scissors every time. It saves a lot of motion. So we're cutting these apart into pairs. So we have pairs of twos. Now, the next thing is going to be to put these twos together, right sides together. Right sides together so your fabric, the pretty part is facing inside. The formula for this is every time you put the pairs together, if you will always sew them together the same way. And I think of it like this. Think of it as the top up and the bottom down. So if you were driving your car and it was a convertible and it was in the rain, you would do the top up and your bottom would be down sitting on your seat. So remember it like that, top up and bottom down. So after you put all of your twos together, then we cut them apart in pairs and then we're sewing together the pairs. If you sew the pairs together so that you nest the seams, and that's what we're talking about when we say top seam up and bottom seam down. Notice that we are not, we are not pressing and we are not pinning. And those two things can eat up a lot of your time. Once those are sewed together, if you nest the seams, which means turning one seam up and one seam down, your points are gonna match perfectly. So on the serger, whether it's on the serger or your sewing machine, that is the goal for the seams to nest. So 
we will keep sewing until we have lots and lots of fours, just like we had lots and lots of twos. So now we're gonna sew our fours together. But if you think of it as just kind of starting over, and our pieces are just going to be bigger and bigger and bigger as we continue to sew all of those pairs of fours together. So it is kind of like a little tournament and you keep on keeping on until you have lots and lots of pairs put together. First twos, then fours, then eights, and when you put your fabric through the machine instead of pinning, now on the serger you really don't have to cut much fabric off, if any at all, maybe just little thread hairs. Just let the edge of that fabric ride right along the edge of that knife and keep on putting your twos together. Now those twos have become fours. Now these fours are gonna become eights and so on and so on. Now always remember, top seam up and bottom seam down. And if you'll always do that, then you will have those pieces nested. Never have to get up and interrupt your sewing to press. Never have to interrupt your sewing to pin. Now, once you have those fours together, sewed in a big, long cruise ship flag, you do the same thing that we did before. You cut them apart in pairs. Now this time, it's going to be just a little different because now we have two long rectangles to sew together. We still have that string that's attaching the two, and now we've got one, two, three seams to match. We lay right sides together, always like before. But once you get to this point, some of the seams have decided the way they're gonna go because of the way they stitched into the previous row. Now, with the fours, the top seam has already decided which way it's gonna go. It wants to go down. And just by a miracle, the other seam wants to go up. So if it's already decided which way to go, that's the way you go with it. If it has not decided, because see this one is all the way across, if it has not decided, you go with your rule. Top seam up and bottom seam down. So this one on the fours, the top one's gonna be down, middle one up, bottom one down. So it's every other one. But you go with the way it wants to go and the other one underneath is going to be the opposite. So your seams are continuing to nest. And while you're holding those pieces together, they are fitting together almost like Lincoln logs. And what is so neat is that every seam will be point on because those little points are going to be perfect. Now we have four across and four down. So we'll continue with the quilt continue with our pieces until we have sets of fours, four across and four down. Now when that happens, you're still doing the same thing. You're starting over only with larger pieces. One point I do wanna make though is that if you wanna make your quilt something other than square, probably the last row we will be in a row. But putting together a quilt like this where you put twos together, they grow into fours, and then they grow into eights, and then they grow into sixteens. When you do it that way, every one of these seams is gonna match, and it's so much easier than doing rows. When you do rows and you start getting off just a little bit, it multiplies as you go along, and you'll never have these beautiful edges. Once your quilt is as big as you want it to be, 
and finished, that's when you go to the iron and you just press these seams very lightly with your steam iron. You don't want to press the life or the texture out of your fabrics. You just very lightly press the seams the way they need to go and every one of them is going to go the way that it should and they're going to be nested instead of piled up. So that is totally the easiest way to sew a quilt together, make it go together quickly, celebrate the color, celebrate the type or theme of the fabric, and give it to your favorite baby, your favorite couch potato. You don't have to worry if they're gonna spill something brown on it or change the oil with it because you can make another one tomorrow. That will make a happy life of giving quilts instead of trying to give something that's taken you years and years to make. So I want to show you a few other quilts that have been made this way. Some are table runners, some are quilts, but the other thing that you can do here is make fabric that you can cut garments out with. The apron that, I, uh, that we'll be showing is done just this way. Because the back of this fabric is totally finished and overlocked, you don't have to worry about how the back looks. There's no raw edges. So you can create fabric, more interesting fabric, and then cut out your garment. 